helping you navigate the ever-changing financial landscape. Watch Business Nigeria every weekday at 2 p.m. only. Hello and welcome to Marketing Edge on TV, Nigeria's leading initiative in the business of brand management and in the management of brand business. It is a 30 minutes awesome packet that comprises brand news, brand in focus, and industry conversation, all in a mix encompassing thorough and in depth analysis aimed at promoting the brand idea. I am Oluwabu Kolomoni. Stay tuned. Marketing Edge on TV, promoting the brand idea. We begin with brand news where we bring you the latest development around brands and on the field of marketing and advertising in Nigeria and around the world. Now on brand news. It was a dazzling evening for the big weeks in the integrated marketing communications ecosystem and the entire guests at the just concluded Media Independent Practitioners Association of Nigeria's second edition of President's Dinner and Awards, held within the cozy ambience of Radisson Blue Hotel in Ikeja, Lagos. The two-in-one event had the theme, In Tune with Tomorrow, Driving Multinational Growth Through Tech, Economy and Regulation Challenge. It had in attendance industry egg ads and seasoned professionals in their corporate bests. Speaking during the occasion, Femi Adelusi, president of MIPAN, noted that the idea behind the dinner is to provide a platform to appreciate, celebrate, socialize, network, and reward members of the IMC industry and government who have played significant roles in driving the IMC industry forward in current year and to connect, engage, network, and have some fun as they prepare for another business here. The need to deepen quality community engagement and participation to strengthen public-private partnerships goes by giving communities voice, enfranchising and mobilizing them to enhance positive impacts from the crux of the panel discussion at the just concluded annual conference by the Brand Journalist Association of Nigeria held at the High Profile Oriental Hotel, Lagos. The media group also held its annual award to recognize outstanding individuals, agencies, and brands who have distinguished themselves with operational excellence in the year. The event themed Public-Private Partnerships, Infrastructural Development Strategy for Government, Communities, Brands, was the 11th edition of the association's annual conference. The panelists, comprising diverse industry personalities, unanimously noted that though government prepares public-private partnerships, which is implemented by the private partners and the investors, but the beneficiaries who would be impacted by such projects should also be carried along. They reckoned that such approach would improve the development outcomes from public-private partnerships when community inputs are resourced and mobilized, adding that it will discourage sentiment to development. As part of its commitments towards ensuring superior customer satisfaction, Spectanet rolled out its carpet to reward a B2C dealers across the nation for their excellent and commendable performances during the Spectanet Jara dealer promotions and especially throughout the 2023 financial year. Over 15 dealers were rewarded with various household electronic gadgets ranging from power generating sets, washing machines, refrigerators to standing fans, shopping vouchers and cash gifts for surpassing the target. Manish Kustreshta, the chief executive officer of Spectanet, disclosed that the Spectanet Jara dealer reward program is about point acquisition on every customer recharge where dealers who accumulate the most point from data renewers done in their outlets get rewarded with valuable gift items and cash prizes. 
After an exhaustive review of the global out-of-home advertising ecosystem, the World Out-of-Home Organization, WOO, has predicted a quantum growth in market size of the sector in 2023 year-end at 36 billion US dollars. The global body in its report noted that after a dip in 2020 with 31 billion US dollars, that global out of home showed recovery and consistency in 2021 and 2022, reflecting a market size of 36 billion US dollar, with a prediction for 2023, which stands at an optimistic 39 billion US dollar. Giving account on its global record outlook, the former FEPE International proudly revealed that digital out of home soared tremendously from 9.4 billion US dollar in 2020, after which the market catapulted to a projected 15 billion US dollar in 2023. That was brand news. Next is branding focus right after the break. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Oh, no. Marketing Edge on TV. Promoting the bright idea. Now on Branding Focus. That digital marketing landscape in 2024 is projected to be characterized by a surge in investments in online video, social media, and mobile platforms, with TikTok and YouTube emerging as the front runners, while X faces challenges and the metaverse experiences a decline in confidence. The allure of TikTok and YouTube as advertising platforms appears to be gaining momentum, reflecting a shift in audience engagement and preferences. As users flock to these dynamic video sharing platforms, marketers are keen on capitalizing on the potential reach and impact offered by these channels. Meanwhile, traditional channels like print, cinema, and TV, however, might experience either a stagnation or a decrease in spending according to projections. Some creative agencies believe that consumers, driven by a desire for value and a focus on essentials, are steering the marketing narrative towards authenticity and results, backed by latest insights from a WAC report, which revealed that the continuous shift in consumer preferences has pointed TikTok and YouTube as major beneficiaries of increased marketing spend in 2024. On the flip side, X, formerly Twitter, faces challenges due to recent controversies, leading 31% of marketers to anticipate a reduction in investments, the highest drop seen in the past three years. Others also attributed the expected increase in YouTube and TikTok marketing spend to the surge in views on generative AI2 related videos. A noticeable change in confidence towards the metaverse is also evident according to the WAC report. While 47% of marketers foresaw an increase in metaverse investment in 2023, only a mere 11% hold the same expectation for the following year. This significant change signals a re-evaluation of the metaverse's current impact and its potential role in marketing strategies causing marketers to approach this evolving landscape with caution. 
That was Brand in Focus. Next is Industry Conversation, where we have discussions with industry thought leaders who have distinguished themselves in the business of brand management and in the management of brand business. Today, we'll be having the concluding part of our conversation with the Chief Operating Officer of Leo Bonnet, Mr. Babatule Shobanjo, right after the break. It's the season to reflect on how far you've come. Get everything done. Workout mix, please. And the endless opportunities that lie ahead. Guys, I'll make my decision and get back to you. For every one of us. So here's wishing you incredible surprises. Which one is mine? All eight of them. And a prosperous new year, this season and beyond. Airtel, a reason to imagine. Marketing Edge on TV, promoting the bright idea. Let me ask you, what would you say are the business principles and you know brand positioning strategies that has ha that has helped sustain Leo Burnett's uh, growth trajectory? Well, like I said, for for us, you know, um, our founding fathers already set the, the principles, um, you know, and then also following the ethos of Leo Burnett. Uh, for us, it's it's about showcasing uh, good work. And you know, like our forefathers used to say, if you consistently do good work, and consist consistent is a very strong word there. Fame and fortune will follow. So for us, is never resting on our laurels. <laughs> My creative people will come at me on this one because I say consistently, like never rest on your laurels. What you've done yesterday is yesterday. Tomorrow you have to beat what you've done. So for us, is always trying to do better than we did uh, yesterday. Okay, great. So how would you compare the Nigeria uh, creative sector with, you know, at, at a global stage? How would you compare it with its global counterparts? We're evolving. Um, and I think just like the way Nigerian music is evolving and it's being accepted globally, our movies are being accepted globally, I think the creative space as well is evolving into that space. And we're actually getting noticed uh, in the Western world as well based on our creativity and our innovations. Okay, so what's your take on the advertising industry standards or practice, you know, introduced by uh, ACON, the Advertising Regulatory Council of Nigeria? You know, it, it, it takes some getting used to, but, you know, we, we, support, the, we support ACON. Um, for us, the rules that they are putting in place is for the betterment of the industry in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. and. We're beginning to see even our clients, especially the international clients, are beginning to embrace it as well. Um, you know, it's not one size fits all, fits all when you come into the Nigerian market. Nigeria di dictates the pace for Africa. Hmm. So you cannot take a strategy or something that has worked overseas. You have to localize it. And localizing it involves using our own people, uh, using our own production houses. And for us, uh, we welcome it and we embrace it with open arms. Okay, so what time frame would you recommend as payment period, you know, for media contracts by clients? <laughs> like right away. <laughs> uh, but unfortunately, it doesn't work like that in, mm. in this space. Uh, but, you know, for us, anything from 30 days and below works better um, as a credit facility to be able to service clients. Um, so anything more than that, you know, you are actually stretching the agency beyond uh, what they're capable of. Because what we sell is uh, intellectual property. It's not um, a product that we're creating and, you know, we're getting money from. It's from, you know, our thinking. So being able to put that out there, you know, it, should not, it shouldn't take more than 30 days to, to make payment for what you actually produce. I totally agree with you. Now let, let's talk about ad spend, the almighty ad spend. Mm -hmm. Now in other climes, it is, you know, 
always easy to get the total ad spend annually. But it's not the same in Nigeria. Why do you think this is? Uh, well, part of our regulation, you know, and I, I, like I said, I have to commend Alcom for what they're doing. Uh, we're, being, we're now being able to gather more information. Uh, we didn't have uh, a regulation or a body that can help us gather all this information. But now agencies are actually taking it upon themselves and, uh, you know, doing research, seeing what is going on and comparing it to the Western world. So even for us um, as a group and as a business, you know, we have a department that is constantly monitoring what's going on in Nigeria. And we're able to put together or articulate that and actually share with our counterparts, say this is what's going on in Nigeria. And our counterparts are actually doing the same for us. So it's more collaborative for us right now. And, you know, we, we are helping each other grow. Okay, good. So let's talk about the challenges militating against the Nigeria creative industry. What do you think those challenges are? I, I, won't, I won't look at them as challenges. I more or less look at them as opportunities. Like I said, you know, before I used to think the competition was another agency, but today's day and age is, is anybody with a cell phone, anybody with a mobile phone. You know, uh, you have children <laughs> today's day and age who have their own YouTube channels, and brands are actually going to them and, you know, talking to them uh, for exposure. So I won't look at it as a channel, like I said. It's like there are new opportunities for us to embrace. Uh, the digital world has opened a lot of things up to us. We have a lot of creators out there. Is how do we keep on innovating? Uh, the moment we stop innovating and we look at everything as competition, then I think that's the moment we start regressing. So, like I said, it's not a challenge. There are more opportunities. More opportunities, you yes. say. Okay, so what does agency collaboration mean to you? Uh, it's actually... Um, it's, it's a welcome idea. Um, you know, I work with different groups or different agencies across Nigeria. And because of the group that we work in as well, we actually collaborate with other markets, different agencies in other markets, uh, from Ghana to South Africa, and even the UK and the US. So the collaboration is it's, it's, it's welcome. It's, it's, it's very open. Um, you know, I should be able to <laughs> call my friend and you know, colleague and say, hey, Steve, Baba Eko, <laughs> how are you doing? Uh, how about we work on this brand together? And, and I know it's something, you know, from Triple AAAM perspective that he has been pushing as well. So for us, it's, 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 it's something that we embrace. Okay, so now moving forward, let's talk. What do you think is, makes an agency, a creative agency, a client's choice? What um, do you think is the secret we find? I think there are, there are many, many ingredients to, uh, to this. Um, you know, apart from the good work that you do, is also being able to deliver value for your client. And let's not forget the culture. You know, you, you create an amazing culture that, you know, even embraces your client. I always tell my clients that, uh, don't look at me as your agency, just look at me as an extension of your uh, organization. And I think because of that, um, our, our clients feel very comfortable with us. Um, we work in an open space. So the client can be here all day today and we're working and ideating on, you know, how do we take the brand to the next steps. So, uh, there are times where we sit in a client's, uh, a, uh, in client's company and do the same thing. And beyond that as well, you know, we, we have such a solid partnership with our client that it's not just about work. <coughs> We actually go out and hang out with our clients. They're almost like a member of the family. Oh. So for us, uh, that's and that's why we call ourselves a boutique agency. We don't. It's boutique not about agency. the narrow and cover, but mm. also about fostering that relationship and creating a great culture, in internally and externally. Wow. Okay. So when when I hear the word boutique, you know, when you hear the word boutique in Nigeria, you know that's expensive because <laughs> <laughs> that's expensive but then I, I there is a growing concern among IMC practitioners about you know the decline in creativity now would you say there is really a decline in you know is creativity really taking the back seat you know in in the industry I, I actually beg to differ and I look at it in the opposite direction okay. like, like I said the industry is is growing and it's innovating. Okay. Um, you know, back in the days, you used to 
you, you get home, put on your TV, sometimes a commercial will come on and you most likely change the channel because my old creative director used to say, nobody goes home to go and watch commercials. Huh. Uh, but today's day, today the democratization of the digital world and also opening up to a new audience of people. And that new audience of people are creating amazing things, huh. really amazing things. You know, um, I, I watch um, a lot of content um, from different content providers. And you're able to see from all social media channels, you know, people who are doing amazing stuff from photography to creating short film. And, you know, it doesn't reside in an agency anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, it resides in your home. Um, you know, I, I talk about my, my daughter who is nine years old. Um, her grandfather asked her to design an invitation card sent all the information wow. and literally in two hours this girl had designed two to three options wow yes and even like her grandfather was like amazed that look you're nine and you did this she was like yeah it was it was pretty easy so you know that's that's what is happening that's the change that's happening she should industry. probably be my next guest <laughs> i'm sure she would, she would gladly do it but she'll charge you oh oh okay <laughs> <laughs> All right, great. So let's talk about the business side of advertising mm -hmm. and marketing yes. in Nigeria. Yes. What does it take? What is it? The business side of marketing and advertising in Nigeria. Well, I mean, the business side, I, I, I am an eternal optimist, right? So I would never look at the challenges or anything like that. I'm always looking for the opportunities, um, you know, from what influencers are doing today to okay. what content uh, makers are doing. Um, I think the, the industry only has upsides for me. Um, from a business perspective, I think brands are looking for new ways uh, of communicating or getting to their target audience. And it's up to us to innovate and come up with those new ways. And when you innovate and come up with a new way that no one is doing, you understand the Naira and Kobo of it. You know, until everyone comes along. So there's always an upside to it. Always an upside to it. Now, you mm. mentioned earlier that anyone with a cell phone is a creative. Yes. Now, we know that there has been a lot of talks about artificial intelligence. Mm -hmm. How is Leo Burnett Lagos leveraging artificial intelligence? Uh, I met with a, I had a discussion with a creative director once, and this was the same question that we posed to the creative director. And he said, AI has actually helped my creativity. It's not a hindrance. Um, I think the people who rely on it solely to create everything, yes, it, there's some laziness there. But if you use AI to help enhance your own creativity, because at the end of the day, the idea still comes from you. AI is just aiding you in you know, expressing that creativity. So we, we, we embrace AI in the group. Um, it, it's something that, you know, my CEO, like, preaches to us. Like, it, don't look at it as competition. It's actually your friend. Hmm. Artificial intelligence is your friend. Yes. Um, <laughs> okay, so let's, let's, let's drive this on. Who is Babatunde Shubanjo? Oh, that's, a, that's a question that I don't think I get asked. So if you have to permit me, um, I, I, I call myself um, a student of the world. I'm constantly learning, <laughs> constantly looking to meet new people, constantly trying to evolve and be a better version of myself oh. today and tomorrow than I was yesterday. Oh. Okay, so where do we see, where, where should, what should we expect or where do we expect to see Babatani Shubanga in the next five, ten years? Uh, five, ten years, should I be considering retirement by then? <laughs> <laughs> um, I think it's always looking for new opportunities and new uh, growth opportunities for our industry and our group. Um, always looking to partner with different agencies that are doing different things and learn from them. And hopefully the next five, ten years, I want to continue to be a 
pioneer and a trailblazer in the industry. Wow, a pioneer and trailblazer in the industry. And so just before I let you go, we know that you're a pioneer and trailblazer already. Oh, thank now you. tell us, what is your favorite industry mantra? Um, I think our chairman is the one that has said this, and I think it's something that we use in the group a lot. Um, you know, it's about consistently doing good work. And if we consistently do good work for our clients, fame and fortune will follow. But we have to consistently do good work and keep our promises. Consistently doing good work. And so you've heard it, consistently doing good work. If you consistently do good work, fame and fortune would follow. And that's the much we can take on this week's episode of Marketing Edge on TV. Join us same time next week. I am Oluwa Bukola Omoni. Bye for now. In the month of December, the first is World AIDS Day, while the second of December is International Day for the Abolition of Slavery. On the third is International Day of Persons with Disabilities. On the fourth of December, attention shifts as the day is dedicated to world wildlife conservation. The seventh is International Civil Aviation Day, and on the 9th is International Anti-Corruption Day. On the 10th is Human Rights Day. And on the 21st is World Basketball Day. 25th is Christmas Day, when Christians celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ. The day after is Boxing Day, which is on the 26th. And on the 31st is New Year's Eve. Brace yourself and tune in to TVC News for in-depth reporting and analysis on these days. TVC News, first with breaking news. on Business Nigeria, we uncover the secrets of the financial world. Breaking down intricate economic and financial matters. We analyze the stock market, shares, bonds, and the thrilling world of cryptocurrencies. We unveil and analyze complex policies of the CBN and other government parasitals as they affect your everyday life, keeping you a step ahead every time. Okay, okay, this is the end of it. Facts matter. Our team dives deep to separate facts from popular opinion. We simplify complex government policies as it impacts your everyday life, helping you navigate the ever-changing financial landscape. Watch Business Nigeria every weekday at 2 p.m. only on TVC News. First, with breaking news. <laughs> Lagos is the most visited state in Africa as the fifth largest economy on the continent. Covering the state and its government is no me feat, it's a busy beat. We go beyond the curtain of tapes to travel in far into the deep. I want to thank the Lagos state government for the healthcare facility. To bring stories that cut across all spectrums. A greater Lagos shall be ours. We tell you stories that define our collective well-being as Lagosians. Amadido Jasalamadini, I live in Lagos, inside Lagos. Hello there. 
It's a brand new quarter and your favorite program, CAC Weekly, is about to unveil new 